45 out. Shadow, anyway. How are we doing? I haven't Can I go to neutral? I haven't yeah. gained a turn. Doing any head shake? I, oh yeah, not right now, but yeah. Nope, first one of the night. And guess what bait? 12 inch headlock. Giving up. I thought she was rolling over there, but she didn't roll. Sweet. First fish of the night, though. Well, it is November. Third season of AM 2000 cast. And third season. In third. Ow. I'm not going to hook my hand. In third November of this bait, outfishing the other baits. Absolutely ridiculous. We try not to run it, and then we put it on, and we catch a fish. So, I think we'll just keep it on. You guys are probably getting sick and tired of seeing this bait in fish's faces. But I tell you what, I'm not mad. There we go. Here we go. 12 inch headlock. Same one as always. Thank you, Duff. But Fish was hooked right on the back hook. Um, it's been pretty much a struggle bus all day. We've seen like maybe, maybe two or three fish, and that's about it. Maybe one follow. And uh, that fish, I don't think really wanted it because it was hooked right on that back hook. And actually, we marked it on side imaging. I turned the scope over and looked, and she, uh, I seen her miss it, and then I seen her come right back up and ate it again, but she didn't eat it like really aggressively. So. Still don't think that they're super fired up, but we might be in a bit of a window here, so we'll get this fish out, take a look at her, and put the rods back out and hopefully get another couple more. Nice fat fish though. Awesome. First fish of the night. Got Bill Shepke with us from AFCO. Doing a little bit of late night trolling now. But super, super nice fat fish. Welcome back to Mayhem's 1000 Cast. Let's get her back so we can get on some more. Kind of the structure, we've seen some fish here yesterday and they were definitely were not eating. And uh, we came today and they've not been eating all day. Um, haven't even been seeing very many, but we did mark two more on the back side of this point. And we marked this one as well. Went down, turned around just like we talk, we mark them. Keep that in mind of where they're at on that structure. Turn back around and get that pass right where it needs to be to bring that bait right over top of his head. It's exactly what we did. Fish bit. Got two more on the back side of the point. Let's get those.
Well, it's day two. We are back out on the water, and uh, what a change in days. Yesterday was pretty chilly in comparison to, uh, to today, that's for sure. It's beautiful out, really calm. It's supposed to start picking up with big wind later this afternoon, but uh, we're out here doing our thing, and I think we're probably going to stick it out quite a while again today as well, because tomorrow doesn't look so nice. But uh, that's fall trolling. We're excited about today. New body of water. Hopefully we get it done today. We're running the down rod. So obviously we always run planer boards on our two out rods. And what we're going to kind of play with now is a stern planer. So this is usually a down rod. I've got my line, uh, I get my bait depth at where I want it to be. So now I'm going to take the stern planer. It's got a clip on the front. Clip that on the front. And then what we did is we took a uh, stay lock and put it on the back. And uh, just because that other clip is just kind of weird. So now, you stick that on there, shut the stay lock, and now it's on there. We get a fish on, we're cranking in, all we gotta do is unclip that, and it'll slide right down the line. And uh, we won't have to worry about that uh, stern planer being on there. So just a little bit more simple of a way to keep it from, uh, keeping from having a bunch of time trying to get that, that planer board off. So I'm gonna send it back, and what a stern planer does, is as a, a regular planter board will push your base out this is just keeping your bait at that same depth but way back behind the boat so if you got a really clear body of water or body of water that the fish seem to be scared of the boat or whatnot this is a good tool to use that because if your boat runs them over and they sink down well a lot of times they shoot back up out there you know 100 150 feet back and uh, what that's going to do is now your bait is running at the right depth but it's way back there running. Whereas if you needed to let out 150 foot of line at, out, your bait would be super deep. So good way to get your bait back behind the boat and keep the fish from uh, being uh, pressured from your boat. Wait, that didn't take long. First fish of the day, a 12 inch headlock on a different collar this time though. Not your typical November fish, but we'll take it. It's only been out for probably an hour. New bait, got it done. Well, hopefully this is the new Lucky 12 inch headlock. Team Rhino Custom, it's got the washboard sides, but it's got the gold back and purple side, white belly, gold back Cisco. Got a lot of flash, flat calm today, super sunny, so that big washboard is gonna call them in from a long ways away. But check that one out at Team Rhino Outdoors, Goldback Cisco. Awesome fish to start today on. We've uh, ran over one and we got one, so they might be eating today. Let's get her back. Wow, that water's clear. I could just saw her go down, I don't know. 20, 30 feet down there. Well, let's get another one. Let's get back on the program here. What do all Musky Mayhem Tackle Pro Staffers have in common? Big fish pictures. Choose the brand that the pros choose. Musky Mayhem Tackle. Let the mayhem begin. Hey Chase, what did we get from Team Rhino Outdoors? Same dog, same Croy. We got two offshore planer boards, leaders from Stealth Tackle. We got the new braid, some Cortland, and some Bahio sunglasses. Wait, shh, carry. What are you guys doing? 
10 inch hex. Husky with this. Got a good pounder and two. Check out TeamRhinoOutdoors.com for all your musky gear. Well, that little fish bent that hook out really bad, so I am just going to go ahead and take that one off. get this one back out kind of give you guys a little idea because we really have done a horrible job about that in the past how much line we're out letting out and everything um, I usually do 31 on a 12 inch headlock and I get my board and if it's a mono rod I don't wrap it if it's braid I do wrap it just like that once is good that just keeps that board from sliding down the uh, line Put that one on Today, with it being flat calm and such clear water, I want to make a biggest spread as I can because these fish are not, you're not going to have to run right over top of them for them to come see it. So, biggest spread as I can get without being too crazy. So, I'm doing 31 feet board and I'm doing 100. So, it's 70 feet from rod tip to the board, 30 feet from board to the bait. There we go. Lucky numbers. There it is. Good. Fish number two of the day. We had a short strike earlier. Good sign, same bait, Goldback Cisco. Ooh, Good. Nice Showing us a little bit on that top. Lift, lift, Bill. Pull. Oh, I'm hung up in the boat. Sweet. Nice fish. Really nice. We'll get this one on pin. Bill Shepke from AFCO getting the work done today. Awesome, awesome. Fish number two. It's a good one. Got it on pin. Same bait as earlier today. Gold back Cisco, Team Rhino Outdoors getting the work done today. Awesome, awesome baits. I really, really, truly believe, especially in the sun, this foil on the side is very, very important. It's not your typical musky day. It's calm, it's clear, we're on clear water, but guess what? We're catching fish, and that's all that really matters. Have some faith in it, man. You know, the weather might not cooperate all the time, but you can't catch them from the couch, and this is how you get it done. Spend some time on the water. Great job, Bill. This one's a good one. So uh, we're going to let Bill grab this one. We're going to put her on the bump, the old musky bumper. Let's take a look, Bill. Awesome, awesome, Bill. Good work. What do we got? 49 and a quarter. Oh, man, that magic number of 49 this year. We've gotten so many nice 49s this year. But what a thick, beautiful fish. Awesome work, man. Beautiful. Great job. Let's get this one back and see if we can't find a few more. Well, we just got that big in the net. Super stoked on that one. Um, one thing that was really cool about that is I marked it on side imaging, probably 20, 30 feet over. And uh, I told Brad, he went back, looked on the live scope. He said, it's coming up, it's coming up. And it came up. It backed off, then it got back up on it, and it was sitting there falling for a second. So I just went like this and made like two or three cranks. And then as soon as my hand came off that reel, the rod went zzz, zzz, zzz. So there was another one um, that ate 
because we were able to see that fish and interact with that fish using the live scope. Um, it seems like we can do that a lot considering last year's uh, November shoot, but I'll be completely honest, I have maybe caught maybe 10 fish over the last three years trolling with live scope and interacting with them. Um, it usually doesn't work, but every once in a while it does. So we always try it. A lot of times they say no and they swim off, but a lot of times um, you can get those to maybe follow longer and the smaller percent of the chance you'll get them to bite, which is, it's just super, super interactive and fun um, while you're trolling, because trolling can be boring at times during your lull periods, but when you're getting lots of follows, you can interact with that fish and maybe get it to commit if you can see it back there. I'm, I'm talking about using the live scope, but you really don't need the live scope. Yes, the live scope 100% confirms that that fish is following it and you can interact with it. But in reality, you really don't need it. Um, because we ran over that fish and we can assume that that fish is following it. Just wait, I don't know, 10, 15, 20, 30 seconds or something, and then start screwing with that rod. And uh, you may not know it's there, it may not be there, but it might be there. So if you run over one on the side imaging or down imaging, whatever you're using, um, just kind of try to assume that that fish is following your bait and give it just a little bit of time because if you're just ran it over and like with that rod, that rod, that bait is way back there. So give it a couple seconds for that fish to find that bait, follow it, and then rip your rod a couple times or do whatever you want to do um, and maybe trigger that strike if you don't have live scope. But if you have live scope, it makes it much easier. You know for a fact that fish is following that bait or doing whatever it's doing to that bait. So, but you don't need it. Just keep that in mind. Well, we just interacted with another one. Um, Bill was down on that rod, doing a little bit of ripping, let a little line back. She'd close the gap, she kind of hung there, just wouldn't commit. She followed a long, long ways, but uh, again, another great example of interacting with these trolling fish. Pretty cool stuff. Musky bumper, measuring fish since 2008. Musky boards that come in three different sizes, left and right-handed variations. They measure accurately up to 60 inches. Stainless steel hardware, lightweight and durable, and they float. We measure your success. Find us at muskybumper.com. Magnum Ventures Inc., a woman-owned company, has you protected when it comes to snow, sand, and wind structural fencing products providing residential, commercial, governmental, and Department of Transportation options for superior property and roadway protection. Proudly made in the USA, Magnum Ventures Structural Snow Fence reduces the drifting and icing of roadways, decreasing the number of accidents and the need for roadside assistance. Contact Magnum Ventures at www.magvenink.com for your project needs. quite tell how big this one is, but we're going to find out in a minute. Feel good, Phil? Hold on. Nice. Number three of the day. Not a giant, but we'll take it. Awesome job, Bill. Good fish. Same bait, I don't know, two, three hours later. We've had some other action with them coming up and following, but this is better yet when they're in the bag. Well, Chase, fish number three on the old Team Rhino, Goldback Cisco. We're not going to complain about that. I think we've got a new special bait in the boat. Obviously works. Good job on that color, Jeff. Awesome. Headlock 12 inch. Hard to beat that. 
three fish in one day. Another beautiful fish, number three of the day. Makes four for our trip. Yesterday was tough, but it's paying off today. Awesome, awesome job. Let's get that one back, Phil. Gold back Cisco, Team Rhino Outdoors. Man, Jeff comes up with some really awesome colors and Duff does a great job with these baits. That was a wild fish. She was still fresh. She, uh, she definitely uh, rolled up in the bag twice, got her unpinned, she ate that bait. Both front and middle hook. Let's go find another one. Still we got, got a little bit of daytime, let's go do it again. Well, as you saw there, that rod was on the outside. So the structure's on the inside. That bait was on the outside of the boat. Um, the fish was in a little bit deeper water than what we've seen all day. When uh, Brad was driving this morning, we were trawling a lot shallower. And uh, we've seen a couple fish up there. We got that one up shallower. Um, and then we started seeing fish pulling farther out off the break. And uh, it kind of seems like it just, they're all just right off the break just a little bit, you know, not. Not way out, but not on the break. So I'm just trying to keep that boat in like 40 foot of water, 35 feet of water, and uh, just kind of cruising that break. That fish there was actually a little bit farther out than that, uh, more like 50, 55. So probably just suspended right out off. Um, one thing I've noticed here in the past couple nights is that uh, right at dark, which it's usually generally all times of year, but especially right now, um, the Cisco's are pulling up and they'll, they'll pull up kind of off the, out in the open water and then they kind of get to the break later in the night it goes. Um, I think these fish kind of sit on the break and then as the day goes, getting towards the evening, they pull off the break and then at night they pull back up on the break. Um, that's kind of what we're, the program is here, just running baits. We're not running very deep, running about 10, 12 feet max. We've got two boards out and a down rod and the board rods are going, going off today. Especially that uh, special headlock. I'm glad I finally have my own 12 inch headlock that's special and we don't have to rely on Brad's all the time now. But I'm gonna keep after it here. Got probably an hour or two till dark. Should only get better, I'd say. Well, that's a wrap for day two. We, uh, three fish in a day, that's not bad. That's why we love this fall trolling. You know, it's mid November and man, it got dark and it's starting to get cold. So wind's picking up. We're going to be back at it tomorrow. We'll see you all then. First grenade fish trolling, day three. Took us a little bit. We've been out about two, two and a half hours, but we got the first one coming into the bag. Grenade fish, kind of cool to see one getting trolled up. Got the work done today, and uh, let's get her unpinned. Didn't need pliers, I guess. All right. The cool thing about it is it was on that front hook. So I got to watch that one eat on the live scope. She came shooting up right away, and it looked like she was going to eat the back end of it, but hey, right on the front hook. They're head hunting, that's for sure. Monster grenade, five skirts on it, has an added three quarter ounce weight on the tail. And the reason for that is when you're casting it with the heavy head, you want that bait to kind of lay out and stretch out as it's hitting the water, which will allow you to not have any foul cast. And then number 10 blades on the back end. So good stuff. Let's take a look at a fish. Yep. 
Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Fish number five, day three. Decent start to a day. Took us a little longer than I expected, but uh, hey, we got the, got the work done. It's always good to get another fish in the bag. Great job, Bill. Awesome, awesome. Bill, you kind of are a good luck charm here. <laughs> We're getting some, uh, getting some fish. It's been fun. A little bit slower. I don't, I don't know what the deal is today so far. Like I said, it's been about two and a half, three hours, but a little bit different day. It's supposed to be really warm today again, but we got a little bit more breeze. The wind kind of changed directions. We've had some partly cloudy, but main thing is we're back on fish. Let's go see if we can find another one. Well, it's uh, getting a little bit later here. We had the one fish on the grenade and we have not marked a fish since. Um, from what we've heard from other people is that today has not been good. We're going to keep after it here and uh, we are going to a new area of the lake, a new basin that we haven't touched yet. So just need to find one more big bite is what we're hoping for. So I think it should be good. Well, Bill, I want to say thank you for joining us on this shoot. Last one of the year, got it all wrapped up, five fish in the bag. Today was a little slower than I would have liked to have seen, but hey, we got one in the bag and, and that's solid good trolling for November, that's for sure. It's always great to be on the water this time of year and have an opportunity at a big fish and we did get one. Absolutely, it was a good time. We really enjoyed fishing with you. We can't thank you as well as AFCO enough for all the support that you've given us. You know, your gear keeps us dry, keeps us warm, keeps us out of the weather, the elements, and that's what it's all about. Well, that's a wrap to our whole season. You know, season three, had a blast, Chase. Oh yeah, good, good uh, season. We had a really, really tough conditions on most of the shoots, but we ended up getting, getting the fish that we needed to make some shows. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's part of the challenge in this whole thing. You know, you set dates yeah. and you gotta go do it and whatever comes of it, comes of it. But uh, we were successful, that's for sure, but we struggled on a few of them. And uh, that's part of musky fishing. That's the fun part. Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, they kicked our butts and we kicked theirs this year, that's for sure, so. Got some really nice fish, as you saw, and uh, we are very, very thankful for that. And want to thank, huge thank you to all the sponsors that we have for uh, helping us, keeping us on the water, and uh, keeping us with the best products we can possibly have. Absolutely. Without the sponsors, we couldn't do what we're doing right now. Viewers couldn't actually uh, watch what we're doing out here on the water as well. Yeah. Hopefully you all enjoyed this past season, and we look forward to filming next year.